Welcome to Of Courage and Righteousness, Selections from the Apology of Socrates by Plato Vegetarian, Part 1 of 2 on Words of Wisdom. The venerated Socrates Vegetarian was born in Athens, Greece, circa 470 BC. Many people consider him to be the father of Western philosophy. Others think of him as an insightful teacher and an enlightened master. Socrates believed that an individual's main purpose on earth was to discover the truth. He stated that most people focus their lives around their families, careers and social responsibilities, when in fact, they should be concerned about the welfare of their souls. With compassion for all life, Socrates followed and promoted a vegetarian diet. Most of the information about Socrates' vegetarian his life and his philosophy was transcribed after his departure by two of his students, Plato Vegetarian and Xenophon Vegetarian. These disciples wrote about their master in several books, in which Socrates is depicted as the main character. One of Plato's most famous and influential works is the Apology of Socrates. This is the philosophical legal defense that Socrates used in the unjust court trial against him, which Plato recorded as an audience of the court. Here, Socrates expounds on the importance of being virtuous and choosing to do good even in the face of hardship. During a lecture in Costa Rica in 1989, Supreme Master Ching Hai Vegan spoke of the sacrifices that the saints, including Socrates Vegetarian, made to enlighten people and why they are the greatest peacemakers. All the saints in the past uh, worked very hard to enlighten people, even though by doing so, they have to endure many kinds of criticism, misunderstandings, and hardship, sometimes even risking their lives, such as in the case of Jesus and Socrates. Also Buddha, many people wanted to kill him, also tried to blacken his name. But despite all of this difficulty, the saints always uh, endure for the sake of people. The saints are the greatest peacemakers the greatest politicians who always bring peace into the world, the king without any throne, because they don't need anything in this world. Today we would like to present excerpts from Plato's The Apology of Socrates, where Socrates courageously chooses not to let his friends or children plead for his life, but defends himself with honor and reason. I, through the whole of my life, if I have done anything in public, shall be found to be a man and the very same in private, who has never made a concession to anyone contrary to justice, neither to any other, nor to any one of these, whom my calumniators say are my disciples. I, however, was never the preceptor of anyone but if anyone desired to hear me speaking and to see me busied about my own mission, whether they were young or old, I never refused them. I allow both rich and poor alike to question me, and if anyone wishes it, to answer me and hear what I have to say. And for these, whether anyone proves to be a good person or not, I cannot justly be responsible because I never either promised them any instruction or taught them at all. But if anyone says that they have ever learned or heard anything from me in private, 
which all others have not, be well assured that they do not speak the truth. But why do some delight to spend so long a time with me? Ye have heard, O Athenians. I have told you the whole truth, that they delight to hear those closely questioned, who think that they are wise but are not, for this is by no means disagreeable. But this duty, as I say, has been enjoined me by the deity, by oracles, by dreams, and by every mode by which any other divine decree has ever enjoined anything to anyone to do. These things, O Athenians, are both true and easily confuted, if not true. For if I am now corrupting some of the youths, and have already corrupted others, it were fitting, surely, that if any of them, having become advanced in life, had discovered that I gave them bad advice when they were young, they should now rise up against me, accuse me, and have me punished. Or if they were themselves unwilling to do this, some of their kindred, their fathers or brothers, or other relatives, if their kinsmen have ever sustained any damage from me, should now call it to mind. Many of them, however, are here present, whom I see, first, Clito, my contemporary and fellow burger, father of this Clitovulosh, then Lysanias of Svitosh, father of this Eschenius, again Andiphon of Kifisosh, father of Epienes. There are those others too, whose brothers maintain the same intimacy with me, namely Nikostratos, brother of Theodotos. Theodotos indeed is dead so that he could not deprecate his brother's proceedings. And Paralosh here, whose brother was Theais, and Adimantos, whose brother is this Platon, and Eantodoros, whose brother is this Apollodoros. I could also mention many others to you, some one of whom certainly Melitus ought to have adduced in his speech as a witness. If, however, he then forgot to do so, let him now adduce them. I give him leave to do so, and let him say it, if he has anything of the kind to allege. But, quite contrary to this, you will find, O Athenians, all ready to assist me, who have corrupted and injured their relatives, as Melitus and Anitus say. For those who have been themselves corrupted might perhaps have some reason for assisting me. But those who have not been corrupted, those now advanced in life, their relatives, what other reason can they have for assisting me except that right and just one, that they know that Melitus speaks falsely and that I speak the truth? Well then, Athenians, these are pretty much the things I have to say in my defense, and others perhaps of the same kind. Perhaps, however, some among you will be indignant on recollecting their own case, if they, when engaged in a cause far less than this, implored and besought the judges with many tears bringing forward their children in order that they might excite their utmost compassion, and many others of their relatives and friends. Whereas I do none of these things, although I may appear to be incurring the extremity of danger. Perhaps, therefore, someone, taking notice of this, may become more determined against me, and being enraged at this very conduct of mine, may give their vote under the influence of anger. If then any one of you is thus affected, I do not however suppose that there is, 
But if there should be, I think I may reasonably say to them, I too, O best of men, have relatives. For to make use of that saying of Homer, I am not sprung from a oak, nor from a rock, but from man. So that I too, O Athenians, have relatives, and three sons, one now grown up, and two boys. I shall not, however, bring any one of them forward and implore you to acquit me. Why then shall I not do this? Not from contumacy, O Athenians, nor disrespect toward you. Whether or not I am undaunted at the prospect of death is another question. But out of regard to my own character and yours and that of the whole city, it does not appear to me to be honorable that I should do anything of this kind at my age and with the reputation I have, whether true or false. For more information, please visit Gutenberg.org. We are trying to create this bottom-up pressure to show that individuals, groups, businesses are all coming together to call for world leaders to implement this global agreement about a transition to a plant-based economy. Nicola Harris, vegan. Enchanting viewers. Thank you for watching today's words of wisdom. 